Alright, what's up boys? It's your neighborhood squeaky boy here. I mean, I'm pretty sure I should just stop saying what's up boys because that just seems cringy. And I should stop saying uh, your neighborhood squeaky boy because listen to my voice from March 2021. What's up boys, it's your neighbourhood squeaky boy here, we and P back with another video. Yeah, <laughs> definitely was squeaky um, back then. So let me know what I should replace it with, because I need a new intro. But anyway, uh, apart from that, I'm just letting you know, before we get into this video as well, that in my last video I said that I'm going to be working on the 3DS iceberg. I don't want to be cancelling that, but I I just can't be asked. I'm pretty sure there's over like... um. It's over a hundred entries, there's like loads of entries or something. I was going to say it's over a thousand entries, but I can't be able to check. And I can't be able to do research, so I don't want to cancel it though, so yeah. But unlike that video from March 2021, I don't want this video to be seven minutes long. I mean, the intro to be seven minutes long. Because yes, the intro was seven fucking minutes long. But anyway, getting to the main point, in this video, we're going to be talking about the history of internet services from Nintendo. And when I mean internet, I mean like multiplayer or whatever. I don't have to describe it. You know, services such as Nintendo WFC, Nintendo Network, Switch Online, and stuff from even before then. Oh yeah, I'm just letting you know that the audio problems like with the music and stuff hopefully should be fixed. If I don't rush this. But, uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, let's get into the video. Now I'm not sure if any of these next services count as internet services because back in the 80s and the early 90s I mean the internet did exist but it wasn't as popular as it was in the late 90s and as it was now I'm still going to include them in this video anyway but while I was writing the script um, I can't say the word while or dial for some reason I found out that, the, that before the Satella view which is what we're going to be talking about there was something called the Famicom Computer Network System, which was a dial of information service, which could access like stock trades, which are live, video game cheats, weather forecasts, and a small amount of downloadable content. It ran from 1988 to about 1991. But let's talk about the next thing, which is kind of linked. The Satella View was a Japanese only peripheral for the Super Famicom which is the Super Nintendo, if you don't know. I mean, if you don't know that, then you should not be on this channel. It contained a satellite modem, and the Satellite View was launched on April 24th, 1995. It was made as a co collaboration between Nintendo and a company called Saint Giga. I hope that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> the peripheral allowed users to download games, some of which being remakes or updates of Famicom or Super Famicom games, um, magazines, and you could also broadcast music. I'm pretty sure Saint Giga was a like a broadcaster of music or something. These were done via satellite broadcast because once again, like the internet and stuff. So it doesn't count as an internet server. However, its successor, Rana, is a is an internet server, and we will be talking about that in a second. The Teleview was discontinued on June 30th, 2000, about five years after launch. Let's talk about Vandy. Vandernet was a service that allowed users to browse the internet on the Nintendo 64 in 1999. I mean, yes, the internet was popular around that time, but in 1999 you could browse your internet on the console. Like, what? <laughs> oh, I'm young, so that's not surprised. But anyway, you could browse a members only portal and share user generated game data. Fun fact it is called Ragnet from Recruit and Nintendo Network. Now, um, you know, the latter part, Nintendo Network, we're getting back to that in a second. But I don't think they named it Nintendo Network because of that. Well, as you can tell by the name, 
Nintendo partnered with a company called Recruit since they ended their partnership with St. Giga. To access Vannet, you needed a Nintendo 64 DD, which is a failed Nintendo peripheral, a 64 modem, an expansion pack, and a Vannet browser disk. Some plans for Vannet, which were never made, were, and this is a lot of things, online multiplayer, downloadable NES games, the emulator was even finished, but to play like virtual console games we had to wait until 2006 was the Wii. A reservation mode where you could watch other people's game sessions. I'm not sure if this is going to be like Twitch or something. Or and I know that came out in 2011 but you, you know what I mean. Or would it be like, spe like a spectator mode. There was beta tests where you could download uh, beta or sample levels from upcoming games. And the music distribution where you could watch videos. And if you believe that, then you are dumb, it's when you listen to music. Once again, these were never released though. In my opinion, that stuff just seems too advanced for 1999 on a video game console. What you could do was create custom avatars, probably not me though. Interactive users either through message boards or emails, get CDs, DD games, peripherals, and even books for some reason for a service called GET or GET mail. And like Satellaview, you could read digital magazines. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Satellaview and Vannet were subscription services. The service was active from... Uh, I, for some reason, I did not put the date. Um, this, oh, fuck, oh my god, you're so... Okay, so I did not put the month, and... Um, yeah, it was active from the 13th of something 1999 to February 28th 1999. You can thank past EMP for that. The, there was a merger company called Vannet DD Co Limited, and that was liquidated from June 2001 up until January 2002. Let's move on to the next. Now, when I was writing this script, I searched up "quote unquote" GameCube online on Google to see if there was like any online services with GameCube and. I found some stuff and that practically changed my video from being just about Nintendo WFC and a little before then to being about all the online services and shit. So uh, yeah, you can thank me for searching that off. But back in 1999, an unknown source at Nintendo of America stated, Network ability is at the top of the list for the new console, which is referring to the GameCube. In February 2000, and I hope I don't butcher his name, um, Shigeru Miyamoto, a person who doesn't even need an introduction, if you don't know who he is, then Gelate, Gelate, I'm joking, uh, stated that he was interested in online gaming. At E3 the next year, Nintendo demonstrated their network accessories and the Game Fantasy Star Online, which is not obviously an online game. However, the former CEO of Nintendo, um, I hope I don't butcher his name, is it Satu Satu Satori Iwata? I've butchered that name, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these names and I'm sorry, I know that he was the former CEO man. <laughs> Don't hit me. Stated that Nintendo was confident with offline games. There were two accessories you needed. The networks as broadband adapter and the modem adapter. These were needed for Fantasy Star Online, but the broadband adapter was mainly used for LAN games. Only five games supported online play, which were three of the Fantasy Star Online games. DLC for a game called, I, I don't know, I'm gonna fucking mess this up, so, VAT, Powerful Pro, Yaki, just VAT, 10, and a game called Homeland. The latter were the Japanese exclusives. Their land games were 1080 Degrees Avalanche, Homeland, once again, uh, Kirby Air Ride, and Mario Kart Double Dash. There are third party PC apps that quote unquote tunnel the GameCube network traffic across the internet so you can play these games quote unquote online. There were a few planned online games for the GameCube which were Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow and a planned GameCube exclusive Battlefield 1942. The former was released without the online features and the latter never went through due to Nintendo not having an online strategy, but it was released on Windows and Mac OS X. Mario Power Tennis and F-Zero GX were originally going to have land functionality and the servers for Fantasy Star Online ended on March 30th 2007. Also, there was a GameCube controller for said game that that was a stretch with a keyboard. 
So uh, let's move on to the next one. And you know that. Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, also known as Nintendo WFC, I'm going to be calling it that because it's just easier, was Nintendo's first proper online multiplayer service. It was launched for free on November 14, 2005 for the Nintendo DS, but was later made available for the Nintendo Wii. Most games on the service used friend codes, which are still used on Nintendo consoles today, to add friends. Apparently, and I just literally copy and paste this next few sentences from Wikipedia, Nintendo had chosen to use the awkward 12 digit friend codes over the more over the more common screen names as the company feared that there could be conflict with people with the same screen name and it would be potentially easy to guess at a person's screen name which created issues with privacy concerns. Yeah I just practically copied and pasted everything I just said. A lot of services for the Nintendo Wii were mentioned in the Nintendo Wii channel iceberg. So uh go watch that. Shame this plug I know. A feature in 2008 was released called pay and play which is for games that have DLC or other services that need other fees. These are paid with Nintendo points. Over 200 games support Nintendo WFC over the two main systems Wii DS. The Wii and the DS had Wi-Fi adapters built in but the DS only accepted something called WEP or WEP which is super outdated like you can't connect to it you know with a modern uh, Router. However, the DSi can use more modern in quotation security protocols like the Nintendo Wii. This means you can't play DSWFC games even with Wiimify due to it just being so outdated. I mean, you can use your mobile hotspot or something, but still. You could use a USB connector to connect to the internet on the DS and Wii but it was discontinued apparently due to a lawsuit or something. Nintendo also began working with internet companies such as BT, you know, British Telecom, and the restaurants such as McDonald's and Starbucks to release hotspots for the public to connect to Nintendo WFC. Nintendo Wi-Fi connection was discontinued on May 20th, 2014. There was footage of this happening during a Mario Kart Wii race. Speaking of MK Wii, there is a service called Wii-Fi that is a replacement for Nintendo WFC that is mostly used by Mario Kart Wii players and custom track distribution such as CTGPR. You should also check out EMP But Stronger because I make Mario Kart content, same as plug. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I don't know why I keep saying that. This is probably because like I just filmed the Iceberg video, so I keep saying let's move on to the next one. Nintendo Network is practically the same as Nintendo WFC, but Nintendo stated that it's not rebranding, but it's a quote-unquote unified network system. Nintendo Network was shown on box art of a game on January 20th, 2012. This was six days before Nintendo Network was announced. So a theory was made that Nintendo Network was a rebranding, but as we said, but as I said, it's a unified network system. I personally thought that it came out in 2011 because, you know, Mario Kart 7 had online play. So what did they use for that short period of time? Just, uh, let me know in the comments. Once again, the features were the same as Nintendo WFC with friend codes returning and free multiplayer. More on that later, you'll see why. New features included Miiverse, which I was a part of and we don't want to talk about that. And Nintendo Network IDs. I'm pretty sure it's just like usernames, but the thing is friend codes were also used as well. Purchases from the eShop were previously tied to the system on the Nintendo DS, like the individual system. I think it was the same on the DSi slash Wii Shop, but this was later changed to it being tied with the Nintendo Network ID. Uh, the Wii U never had this problem though. Funds were combined for the 3DS with the Wii U as well, so they were connected. Services included more streaming services like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, all that. But there was a short-lived service called Nintendo TV with two eyes for some reason. There was Wii U Chat which I don't think anyone used but me and my sister. There was Miiverse once again and there was a service called Swap Note or Nintendo Letterbox here in Europe. And I just found out when I was writing the script that there was a service called Nintendo Network Premium. And that was a loyalty program. There's not really that much information I can find though. And also fun fact, fun fact, Nintendo Network Services Inc. 
was originally called Wii No More Inc. Which, as you know, it was an application for the Nintendo Wii. The company was renamed in 2012 to what I said earlier. But the company was liquidated in 2018. But as we all know, Nintendo Network still works as of 2022. Well, the beginning of 2022, you never know. Nintendo Switch Online is a subscription service for the Nintendo Switch, obviously. Despite Nintendo WFC and Nintendo Network and even the GameCube being free to play online, Nintendo Switch Online costs money. It was free for a short time, however. Nintendo Switch Online was launched on September 18, 2018. Some free to play games don't require a subscription to play online. With Nintendo Switch Online, you can play Nintendo Entertainment System games, Super Nintendo games, Genesis slash Mega Drive, and Nintendo 64 games. Unlike Roger Console, you don't need to pay for the games individually, but included with Nintendo Switch Online. Nintendo 64 and Genesis games do require the expansion pack. Some of the games from previous systems that have multiplayer can be played actually online, so yeah. Well that's the end of the video. I would like to say thank you for watching this video and I would like to apologise if there were any stutters or audio problems or if the cuts I made were bad. Uh, so yeah. Please, once again, leave any criticism down in the comments, you know, so I know how to improve my videos since I just practically just started YouTube. Also, if you've got any suggestions for me to make, like, video topics, then please let me know in the comments because I was thinking, why not make a video on Nintendo WFC, so that's where this video idea came from. It can be about Nintendo or whatever. If it's, like, related to tech or anything, I might look into it and I might make a video based on it. But thanks for watching, and yeah, I've been EMP, and peace.